Hi guys, welcome to another beer review. I'm doing this as I'm preparing my uh, work lunch for tomorrow. Making myself some uh, paninis. This camera looks like it's zoomed in, but I don't think it is. Uh, making myself some paninis with smoked cheese, um, smoked German salami, maybe a bit of ham, maybe a little bit of green pesto. Just f throwing stuff that's opened in the fridge together and making a couple of paninis. And of course, no matter how big or small uh, the meal that you're cooking, you've always got to have a beer while you cook. Do you know what I mean? Even though it's just me assembling a sandwich and putting it in the, the oven for it to cook through. Anyway, any excuse, Peter, you alcoholic bastard. No, I'm not really an alcoholic. What is going on with this camera? 14 times zoom it's got. It kind of actually works. I don't know how well that's uh, coming across um, on camera. So yeah, we're going over to Freeze Brewing, and that's T-H-R-E-E-S, not F-R-E-E-S. And uh, these guys are based out of um, 55 West Railroad Avenue, Garnerville, New York, zip code 101923. Where's the dash in the other four digits? That's annoying. I'm joking. Dealing with American customers. It seems like, um, I don't know, are the like, last four digits of a complete zip code not like that essential, um, really? And also, if any American customers are watching this, right, where I work, the way we have to get into a customer's like, uh, record to place orders is to take their email address if they've already got it. Failing that, we have to take their zip code, then confirm their last name, and then confirm their address. What do I have to say to an American customer to just give me the top line of the address? I don't need the, you know, the, the state, don't necessarily need the city. But like, what, what, how would you, how would you like format that? Or how would you ask just for that specific um, piece of information because I always end up with the, the customer just reading out their full address to me. I was just wondering if there was a, an answer to that. Um, not I'm not like taking the piss, I'm not like dissing or anything like that. I mean, look at you know, some of our addresses here in the UK. And trust me, I get a lot more frustrated with the British customers compared to the American customers. Um, but yeah, it's just something that I've always thought about and I want it, it so I can like cut down the call times and get straight to the point but anyway yeah so New York so an, a nice bit of craft from New York and uh, yeah no ABV on the can label so alcohol free drink as much as you want drink a few of these and drive and you could just say I thought it was, I thought it was a non-alcoholic beer I don't understand how, again, question for my American customers when it comes to like the, the licensing laws and that sort of thing. How do American breweries get away with not putting the alcoholic volume and percentage on an alcoholic beverage? And why would a brewery choose not to? I've never understood that. I don't understand, like, just... There's loads of blank space there. You could include the... It's 7% ABV because I looked at it on, ta on untapped. I mean, you know, you've got your sort of like recycling price. But, um... Yeah. Nowhere on this can does it say the ABV. And I've just always wanted to know how you can get away with that. Uh, or choose not to include that information when you brew alcoholic beverages. I've started off like really fucking whiny in this review. Didn't intend to do that. I'm getting a little bit self-conscious because of how zoomed in that camera is. I am not going to lie. Um, but yeah, lovely looking artwork on this. Got this from the Mickler Beer Club uh, box for March. So uh, yeah, let's see what we get with this one. Oh, God, that's so close. It's bad enough when... You know, you see me from a distance, but I feel so sorry for anybody who has to watch this. People have to see me in person. I feel so sorry for them. 
Anyway, let's get this beer poured and see what we get. So I can get on with making me food. So there we go. Stupid poor, Peter. Very stupid poor. Uh, but yeah, hazy, sort of lemony. It's got that sort of like lemon cough syrup, like cough syrup look to it. Cough medicine look to it. Uh, like a, a locket um, for the UK people. Although I'm sure lockets are in different territories. Lozenges with like honey and lemon. Um, but yeah, a little bit of mango on the on the appearance. It's, you know, it's juicy. It's hazy, it's turbid. Nothing's getting through it. Looks absolutely lovely. And there's two things worth in a nice soapy white head. And uh, getting a call, which I'm not going to accept, even though it's probably going to interrupt the video, which is going to really fucking annoy me. Anyway, so let's see what we got on the nose. It's nice and sweet. There's a little bit of... Yeah, it's got tropical vibes to it. It's not like overtly tropical. It's not really in your face. It's got pineapple. It's got melon. A little bit of um, mango. You get a little bit of a citrusiness, like a soft, sweeter citrus fruit, like a blood orange with maybe some sugar sprinkled on it or like a pink grapefruit for instance it's really nice and soft and inviting it's one of those sorts of IPAs I think it's my mate from work who wants to go out for a cig you know it's fucking windy as hell and it's pissing down but I always say yes anyway smells good let's give it a taste cheers Big hit of mango in there. And then it by sort of transforms into a big overtly citrusy uh, smelling beer. It's got a slight medicinal edge to it, I'm not gonna lie. It has that slight sensation of um like a like a orange vitamin tablet you put in water. Nice bitterness throughout. It's a nice balance of bitterness and sweetness. Nice uh, medium mouthfeel to it. Gentle carbonation gives it a sense of being a little bit more velvety. I mean, there's rarely nothing wrong with it, but it's just, it's got a slight seltzer, uh, water, medicinal, vitamin tablet character to it. Which sometimes is really, really nice. But it kind of like, it detracts slightly from the beer. But I'd say it's more citrusy than anything else. Slight herbal edge. There's never so slight dankness to it also. So there's uh, quite a few things going on. But yeah, it's that, that medicinal character. It's, it's building up now. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. But do you know what? I'm not going to grumble. Um, I got a couple of cans of this because I got sent a duplicate box. So I think I've already drank the other can, <coughs> to be honest. But um, yeah, not bad. Um, so I'm always intrigued to try a brewery that I've never even heard of before, which doesn't take a lot because I know next to nothing about beer, even though I'm you know nearly 2,000 beer reviews in at this point. But yeah, definitely one that I'll be uh, looking forward to try in the future. I don't know why my voice went dead shaky as if I got momentarily nervous. But a uh, lovely looking stuff, a very striking can. It's just that that slight medicinal character lets the beer down slightly. But I'm still going to enjoy the rest of that when I come back in off my cig. So my food is going to be delayed slightly, but oh well. Um, Yeah. It's a nice beer, 7 out of 10. I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. So if you tried anything from this brewery or the beer itself, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. Go check out the brewery and, of course, Mickler Beer Club referral link for all you European folk. Well, some, because I know there are some countries that Mickler can't send beers out to now, which is a real shame. Um, but, yeah, get in on the action. Get yourself a discount in your own box and uh, get to try some really intriguing beers that you probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to do so. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully 
see you all later. Cheers.